of your time we want to get straight into it praise god arasujala mahanta zalo sijala bahatya Praise God. Right. I don't want to take much of your time. We want to get straight into it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We honor you, Heavenly Father, for this blessed and glorious day. I declare and I decree that everybody that is under the sound of my voice, Lord, their lives can never remain the same. Father, as we rightly divide your word of truth, let us come to the knowledge of truth. Let our eyes of understanding be enlightened that we may come to the knowledge of truth. Heavenly Father, I thank you. We honor you. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Para sun telegisha para hadia segra don telegisha para sadina kendra doski aduja la hadia pere sadija la mahanta yabasio. Father, I pray that you will meet them at their point of need, Lord. In the name of Jesus, whatever it is that they are trusting you for, Lord, meet them at their point of need. Let there be a manifestation of the finished work of your goodness, of your grace, of your mercy in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I thank you. And I bless your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, Parosa. Oh, South Africa is in the building. I'm excited. Pastor Murray is in the building. Uh, Pastor Daisy in the building. I'm too excited. I'm too excited. I'm too excited, right? I don't want to take too much of your time, but just let somebody know that we are live and life is indeed flowing through the airwaves. I'm excited super excited of what i'm about to bring to you today's message is going to change your life your life can never remain the same i know i know south africa is in the building listen everybody that is watching from south africa i just want you to know we love you so much we are praying for you we are so proud of the work that you are doing in the name of jesus my goodness gracious i'm excited super excited praise god like I said, I don't want to take much of your time. We want to get straight into it. But today's message is a message that you ought to listen to very carefully and attentively. What I want you to do right now is I want you to make sure you've got your notebooks, notepads, Bibles, wherever you write your notes, because I'll be giving quite a lot of scripture. Today is Bible study we are teaching. Today I am teaching. Praise God. Don't allow me to preach. I'll be teaching. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Right, let's get straight into it. Let's get straight into it. The book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 5. Pastor Boy Tumelo, oh my goodness. Every time I just see you there, my heart is filled with so much joy. Praise God, I'm excited. Praise God. But before we get there, I want you to understand something that in this season, you are going to you are going to unlearn that you may relearn as you move from your comfort zone, especially if you want to go grow spiritually, you have to move from your comfort zone. How do you move from your comfort zone when you unlearn and relearn? Listen, there are so many things that we have learned along the way. Um, there are so many things that we have learned. And right now, even if I was to tell you something that, no, this is not it, but because you have a mindset that you have grown into, that's why Paul, when he writes to, to Timothy, he said, he say, thou from a child that has been acquainted, thou has been acquainted to the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise. So that means you can be acquainted to doctrines of men. So he has been acquainted to sacred writings, which are able to make thee wise in regards to salvation. So the scriptures there, they make you wise in the regards in, of salvation. So from a child that thou has been acquainted to the sacred writings, which are able to make thee wise. So that means you can be acquainted to certain doctrines to the extent that when we tell you that this is who you are in Christ, it is hard for you to comprehend. But because they ought to be mindsets that have to be renewed, that's why the Bible talks about them. Let your mind be renewed. They ought to be a renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. Praise God. So in this season, you're going to unlearn so that you can relearn. Second Corinthians, if you are there, 
2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 5. The Bible says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Right there is spiritual warfare. So spiritual warfare is not uh, what you have been taught or it's not what you think it is where you're fighting. That's not spiritual warfare. That's just you just shouting or just praying out loud. That's not spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is when we pull down strongholds, mindsets. That's spiritual warfare. So if you want to grow spiritually, you ought to move from your comfort zone. All right? So... Your mindset, your mindset, your mind has to be renewed, yeah? You, you, in this season, I declare that you won't be stuck in that your mindset. So spiritual warfare is the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. So spiritual warfare happens while you are walking. Spiritual ha warfare happens while you are doing what you are doing. When you are pulling down strongholds, that's spiritual warfare, all right? So, spiritual growth comes through teaching. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching today. Um, if you see me preach, it's fine. Allow me, but I want to teach today. Spiritual growth comes through teaching. And the teaching has to be systematic, you listening to 10 different preachers does not make you grow spiritually. Because spiritual growth has to be, a, has to be taught. It's a teaching that is systematic. That's why you'd see when I'm teaching about something, I go for victory. One, two, three, four, five. It has to be systematic. So if you want to grow spiritually, it has to be systematic theology right unlike even a preacher today you're listening to this preacher is talking about who stole my wedding gown this one god will bless you if you do this this one will bring my isaac this one the, this all those teachings you will not grow spiritually with all that today who stole my wedding gown tomorrow uh, fire for fire tomorrow every witch in my village must die you listen to that message tomorrow another message making millionaires tomorrow another message you will never grow spiritually Never, 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 never. But systematic theology allows you to grow. So that's why every time when I'm preaching, always pay attention because I will start something today. I will not finish it today. It will carry on. Because we have to do what we call exegesis. We, get, we take you through the scriptures so that you come to a place of knowledge, a place of understanding okay so it is systematic theology is necessary for you to grow second peter second peter right now somebody said yeah just tell us how, how, how do you know that i'm cold you see see your head instead of you being patient with the scriptures and understand where we are taking you from you'll be like just tell us just tell us you see because you have been acquainted to native doctors that will tell you, take this and do this, then you will have this. No, it doesn't work like that with the scriptures. Emmanuel, it is good to see you, my beloved. I love you so much. This message is for you, especially you, Emmanuel. This message is for you. I'm going to open up certain things that will open up your spirit. Kana, my beloved, it is good to see you. God bless you. Now watch this. Second Peter. Second Peter, oh my God, today's message, most of you, you will be in shock. Second Peter chapter 1 verse number 3, Second Peter chapter 1 verse number 3, the Bible says, His divine power has granted to us all things, His divine power, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence. Key word there I want you to pay attention to is he has called us. His divine power has granted us all things. His divine power. So what has granted you all things pertaining to life and godliness is his divine power. His divine power. Now he's, he goes on to say, he is what? He, for ye, 
through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. The key word that I want you to pay attention to is called us. Pastor Timothy, it is good to see you and uh, welcome. Even though you're late, yet you promise me you will not be late. Today you're late. You see, this is why I don't want to preempt certain things. Because people like Pastor Timothy will come late. And Daisy came late as well. I saw her crawling in, coming late. Praise God. Yeah, look at you. It's a joke while telling the truth. <laughs> so, his divine power. So what you need to do is you have to acknowledge that that his divine power has granted us all things. So there is nothing that you ever need that is missing. It, is already, it, it, is, it has already been granted to you by his divine power. Yvonne, it is good to see you, my beloved. Miss you so much. His divine power has already granted us all things that we need pertaining to life and godliness. So that is what you have to acknowledge. When Paul was writing to Philemon in Philemon chapter 1 verse number 6, what did he say? He said, let the sharing of your faith become effectual, effective. So that means your faith becomes effective. Your faith becomes effectual. How does your faith become effective? How does your faith become effectual? By acknowledging every good thing that is in you because you are in Christ Jesus. So your faith does not work because you have small faith high faith big faith no your faith becomes effectual it becomes effective it becomes impactful when you acknowledge every good thing that is in you because you are in christ jesus so he's telling you now that his divine power has granted us all things all things that word old things, it means old things. So in the old things, what is incorporated in the old things is the nine gifts of the spirit. They are in your inside. The gifts of prophecy, the gifts of healing, the gifts of working of miracles, the gifts of interpretation. All those gifts have been granted unto us by his divine power. They are in your inside. So when you begin to see the manifestation of the prophetic in your life, just mean it only means that you have grown in that grace. So you have acknowledged it. So you don't have to limit yourself that I just have the prophetic or I just have the healing ministry. No. You are limiting yourself because the gifts of the spirit are in your inside because the giver of the gifts of the spirit is the Holy Spirit who is in you and you are born of him. You are born of the spirit. So the spirit that is in your inside is the Holy Spirit. He is the giver of gifts. So all these things that you hear certain men saying, gifts, transferring gifts, we are, I'm transferring gifts to you. That's heresy. The highest level of heresy. There is no man that can give you a gift. There is no man under the sun. No matter they are an archbishop, arch whatever, arch pastor, arch prophet, arch whatever. There is no man under the sun that can ever give you a gift. The giver of gifts is the Holy Spirit. What a man can do is what we call impartation. And impartation is not transferring gifts from him to you. No. Impartation is activating what is already in your inside. Taken from the spirit. Making it manifest in you. Taken from whose spirit? Your spirit who is the Holy Spirit. So that's impartation. So there is no man that can give you a gift. All this is so a seed for you to have the gift that I have. That's a lie from the pit of hell. There is no man that can give you a gift. The giver of gifts is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is in your inside. Roberta, it is good to see you. God bless you. So no man, no man, they'll tell you, sow a seed so that I give you a gift. There is this gift I have, the prophetic gift. I will give it to you if you sow a seed. You need to sow a sacrificial seed. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The giver of gifts is the Holy Spirit. He is the one that gives gifts. And all the gifts that you need, if you have the giver of gifts, that is the Holy Spirit, that means all the gifts, all the nine gifts of the Spirit, they are in your inside. So Paul says to Philemon, let the sharing of your faith become effectual by acknowledging these things that I'm teaching you. Acknowledge every good thing that is in you because you are in Christ Jesus. 
So his divine power has granted us, his divine power has granted us all things pertaining to life and godliness. He's divine. So that means what you have in your inside is divine life. Because you have the life of God. You have divine life is in your inside. Divine life is in your inside. Look at verse number 4 of the same Second Peter. My goodness. Second Peter. Look at verse number 4. By which he has granted us to his precious and very promises. Promises. The promises. Holy Spirit. Watch this. So through them, you may become partakers of his divine nature. So it is through the Holy Spirit. That's why we cry, Abba, Father. Kathy, it is good to see you. That's why we cry, Abba, Father. We are born of the Spirit. We have the Spirit of God. So the, the fact that you have the Spirit of God, you have his divine life. The life that you have is divine. You have the divine life of God in your inside. But you don't know that. No wonder why you're not seeing manifestation until you acknowledge that you have divine life. Now, what does he say? Look at that verse 4. That verse 4 is, is powerful. He said, by which he has granted us his precious and very great promises. So that through them, you may become, you may become partakers. Partakers of his divine nature. Having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. So now, <clears throat> his divine life is in your inside. Now watch this. Watch this. Oh, glory to God. Sec First Corinthians. I'm laying a foundation and we're about to take off in a few minutes. But everybody that is here, you will thank yourself for being here. Oh, First Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 26. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 26. For consider your calling, brothers. Ah, not many of you were wise according to the worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. Now this is Paul speaking in the church in Corinth. My goodness, I, I, I just love brother Paul. What does Paul say? He says, for consider your calling, wait that means there is a calling there is a calling upon you roberta there is a calling upon you mary there is a calling upon you kathy there is a calling upon you daisy there is a calling upon you boy tumelo there is a calling upon you florence there is a calling so the bible is saying consider your calling that means there is a calling that means there is a calling. Now watch this. There is a call of God upon your life. Listen, listen, listen. You have been acquainted to nonsense for so many years. Many of you right now, you think you don't have a calling because of what you have been taught that I had an encounter, a mountain top. God. You hear people saying, oh, are you called? You're not called by God. You're not called by God. You're not, yay, yay. Be coming down. There is a call of God upon your life. I'm going to expose that today. There is a call of God upon your life. And you need to see it. That's what Paul is saying. Consider the calling. You need to see it. So there is a need for you to see it. Because the call of God is upon your life. Ah. Now watch this. He says, For God, O Lady Giazusha, watch this. Let, let me read this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. He says, Not many of you were wise according to the worldly standards. Watch this. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble. But God chose what is foolish to the world. So that means the people that God chose are the people that don't look like pastors. Oh God help me. <laughs> the people that God called, they are people that don't look like pastors. They are people that were not noble. They are people that were not strong. They are people that were not... 
but he chose the foolish things Kiparoski. he chose the yuvons that people had looked down upon said yuvon you don't look like you are called by god but god chose the foolish things not the people that look like pastors because there are people that look like pastors but God did not choose the people that looked like pastors. If you look at the Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, all the people that God chose for ministry, they don't look like ministry. Ah, my God. God chose people that had issues. <laughs> I'm about to expose something and that something is about to change your life forever. The people that God chose, they don't look like pastors. They don't look like noble men. They look ordinary. They look like, you know, that's why God chose the foolish things. They were weak. They were weak. The people that God chose were weak. They had issues. Look at the likes of Moses. Moses had so much anger. Moses had a short temper. But God still chose Moses. Oh, God punished the devil. <laughs> God still chose Moses. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what your weaknesses. God still chose you. You don't look like a pastor. You don't look like a prophetess. You don't look like an evangelist. You don't look like a bishop. You don't look like an archbishop. It doesn't matter. You don't look like it. And God did not choose the ones that looked like it. He chose the ones that did not qualify. Because Jesus is your qualification. Can I push this thing a little bit more? Moses is there and Moses had anger. These are people that Moses used. Look at the likes of Abraham. Abraham, hey, Abraham, Abraham. Could not even wait. Ended up with another small house. Abraham. But God still chose him. David, he got to the point whereby he killed someone's, someone's husband that he may take the wife. And still God chose him. And still God used David. David killed a man's a, a, a woman's husband that he takes the woman david but still god chose him still god used him you have people like samson samson killed people he killed himself but still god chose him now listen to brother paul my god ha Woo. look at brother paul in first timothy it doesn't matter what, what it doesn't matter what you think you look like because you have been told uh, you are not called by God. You did not have a mountaintop experience. Most of these people that tell you mountaintop experience, they have never even had an encounter at a mountaintop. It's just talking so that they sound spiritual. What mountaintop? <laughs> anyway, let's leave those for two minutes. I'll come back and I'll punish them. No, not them. I'll punish the devil. <laughs> I don't like punishing people. I punish the devil. Now, look at this. First, First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 1 verse number 15. First Timothy chapter 1 verse number 15. Praise God. First Timothy chapter 1 verse number 15. This saying is tr trustworthy and deserving all full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world. He came into the world to do what? To save sinners. Whom of whom I am the foremost. This is Paul speaking. Paul is saying, Jesus came to save sinners. And amongst the sinners that he saved, I am the chief sinner. I was a chief sinner. Now watch this. Paul, who was a chief sinner, became a chief apostle. How God does his things is amazing. The chief sinner became the chief apostle. Meaning, you that is watching and listening to me right now, you have no excuse. You have no excuse. And I declare over you right now, God will use you the way you are. And if there's something that God does not like, he will fix it. Don't wait to be perfect. You can never be perfect for God to use you. 
if there be anything that is is in you that is lacking it is god that will fix it he called moses he was not perfect he called david he was not perfect abraham was made to be a father of nations but he was not perfect but it is god that brings perfection that is the reason why he came that is the reason for his death his burial and his resurrection that we may be accepted in the beloved that our perfection is in christ jesus paul is saying jesus came to save the sinners and i was a chief sinner i was a chief sinner meaning i was the head of sinners we are talking of Paul, the guy that would go into the church, begin to kill people in the church. People are praying, Rataka yaba, rakata. Paul would walk in and begin to kill people. He made others to be orphans, others to be widows, others widowers. Paul. But after all that, God still looked at Paul and said, Paul, my son Jesus, Retosh Kataya Manderebosha, did not just die in vain, but his death he had you in mind. It doesn't matter what you have gone through. It doesn't matter what you have faced before. But my son came that you may have life. And when you have that life, you have it abundantly. He came for sinners like you. And so that he, oh, Baros Sataya, you may be righteous in Christ Jesus. It is God that would bring perfection through, this, through, this, through the sacrificial work of his son. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. And his death, his burial, and his resurrection was perfect. Was perfect. I don't need to add to what Christ has already done. So when you hear people say, do this for God to do that, that's adding to what Christ has already done. What you need to do is to acknowledge what Christ has already done. Don't add to what Christ has done. If there be anything in you that is not right, it is God that will fix it. But it, it won't stop him from calling you because he has already called you. Through his divine power, he has granted all things pertaining to life and godliness. And all those things have been bestowed in you. How do I know this? Because you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good work. That means everything that was used to create you, it can only be found in Christ. Nothing else that was used to create you was found from outside except in Christ. You are his workmanship, created in. That means everything that was used to create the new you was found in Christ. Was found in Christ. That means you have the DNA, the sperma of God. My goodness. Remember, you are work in progress. You are work in progress. He said... So you may not be noble, you may not be perfect, but you are called. Oh, God help me. Jesus even called Peter, one of the disciples, knowing fully, because God knows from the end to the beginning, knowing fully that Peter would deny him, but he still chose him as one of his disciples. He chose Judas. He chose Judas. Judas was among the disciples that went about casting out devils, preaching the gospel, healing the sick. Even though Jews, Judas, he preached the gospel. He cast out devils. But he answered to the call to be a son of perdition. How do I know that Judas answered to the call to be a son of perdition. The Bible says this, my God. And Satan entered Judas. He entered. So when somebody enters somewhere, that means they have, the door has been opened for them. They have been given access. That's why the Bible will say in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 that do not give room to the devil that means you can give room to the devil and he can enter you can give room 
to the devil. So Judas answered to the call to be a son of perdition when he opened the door for the devil to enter. But he was called by God. Even though he was a thief, stealing, but God still chose him. But it is him that then accepted the call to be a son of perdition. 1 Corinthians chapter 127. I'm just laying a foundation. We're about to take off in a few minutes. Mm. My goodness gracious. Glory to God. Are you here with me? Are you still here with me? 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 27. Praise God. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world. Even things that are not to bring to nothing things that are. This is what God chose. He chose the weak. He chose the weak. He chose those that were not noble. He chose that girl from that city, that village, whom everybody looked down upon. There are those that looked the part. Remember the time that David was anointed king. There were others that were there that were lined up, that, were, that looked the part. But when the prophet was anointed, he said, no, 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 no. There should be somebody else that is missing. He said, there, there's nothing. These are the only people that are here. These are the only sons I have. These, these are the ones that are here. He said, but there's someone. The one that was in the village tending the flock. The one that did not look like a prophet. The one that did not look like a king. That was the one that God was looking for. He was not looking for the ones that were noble. He was not looking for the ones that were strong. He was looking for the one that was weak. He was looking for Kana. Saying, Kana, you look down upon yourself. But the call of God is upon your life. You are chosen, Kathy. Irregardless that you don't look like it before men, according to the standards of this world, but according to God's standard, Jataya Baroda, your calling has been sealed on Calvary by his death, his burial, and his resurrection. When God looks at you, Yvonne, when God looks at you, Rosemary, he does not see Rosemary, but he's looking and he's seen. This is my daughter, Rose, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye, hey! You might not look like a prophetess according to the standards of the world, but there's a call of God that is upon your life. God did not choose the noble. He chose the weak. The ones that don't look like prophetesses. Because there are others that look like it. But God chose the ones that did not look like it. Then they say, there is a, but there is a small boy that is in the field that is tending the ship. And then they called him. And when the prophet saw him, he said, this is him. I've been waiting for. David did not look like it. He was just a small boy. Rosemary does not look like it. Kathy does not look like it. According to the standards of men. But there is something that happened on Calvary. There is something that happened on the cross. There is something that happened from the cross to the grave. There is something that happened upon his ascension. Upon his ascension, his Holy Spirit came upon you. Ratoshki Barahadia. To them that received him, he gave his power to become the sons of God. Now we cry, Abba, Father. Something happened. Something happens that changes your status from a nobody to royalty. There is something that changes your status from a nobody to a priest. There is something that changed. Oh, <laughs> allow me to push this thing a little bit. Okay, let me calm myself down. Let me calm myself. My goodness gracious. Let me calm myself down. No matter your circumstance, you are in Christ. 
God still put his call upon your life. Irregardless of what you might be facing right now. You might be facing challenges. You might be facing whatever that you might be facing. Whatever circumstance that you are facing. It does not change that you are called by God. No matter your past. It will not change that you are called by God. <laughs> I might not have what people expect me to be having by now. According to their standards. But it does not change that the call of God is upon my life. While David was tending the ship. It did not change that kingship was in him. But he was there in the fields. Eating whatever he was eating. Leaves. Whatever he was eating. Playing with goats. Playing with sheep. Killing bears. Killing lions. While whatever he was doing. Playing in the mud. It don't matter. But he was a king. <laughs> I don't know who I'm speaking to. Rosemary, it doesn't matter what you are facing right now. It doesn't change that God has called you. God has called Emmanuel. God has called you. It doesn't matter what you might be facing right now. You might be in the mud right now. You might be in a situation where you're saying, but God, if it can, if it's not you, who else? But I'm here to announce to you. That will not change that the call of God is upon your life. That did not change that David was in the fields tending sheep and goats and whatever that he was tending. Yet there were others that looked the part. But it did not change that kingship was in him. And I'm here to declare upon you, not only that the kingship is in you, but you are kings, you are sons, you are priests unto God, called according to his purposes. Ah, It doesn't matter. That right now financially things are not well. It doesn't matter that the husband is playing up. It doesn't matter that the wife is playing up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It does not change that you are called by God. Kingship is in you. You are royalty. Peculiar people. It don't change. Uh, I don't know if somebody's getting this. Uh, Kalavati. It is good to see you. God bless you. Even when you feel not qualified, Jesus is your qualification. That's the way he calls you. Ratika Barahate. Now watch this. Watch this. Hebrews. I don't know if I'm going to finish this, but I have to push this a little bit more. I have to. Because there's something that you... Hmm. Hebrews. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3 verse number 1 Praise God Watch this Therefore holy brothers You who Ye who ye Hazusha hade Hi You know times when you want to read fast <laughs> Let me calm down right Therefore holy brothers You who share in the heavenly calling Ha Consider Jesus, the apostle and the high priest of our confession. You who. Did you hear that? He says, you who. You who. Share. In the heavenly calling. Ah. Meaning there is a call of God. On your inside. That is from heaven. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 verse 14. <clears throat> I'm about to move because right now I'm just laying a foundation. This is a foundation. You know, I love laying foundations. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3 verse number 14. Praise God. <clears throat> the Bible says, I press towards the, the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. This is Paul speaking. He said, I press towards the mark of the high calling. I press. That means, wait, pay attention. Hmm. There is a high calling of God in your life. The greatest honor, the greatest honor is to be called by God. That is the highest call. That is the highest position ever. The greatest call is not you being a prime minister or a president. The greatest call, the greatest call is that you 
are called by God. Listen, you are called by the uncreated creator, the one that sits in his own circumference. He called you and said, Rose Mary, I want you to come and work, not for me. Mm -mm. Listen to this. He did not say, I want you, Rosemary, to come and work for me. Mm -mm. He said, I want you to come and work with me. <laughs> I will be in you. <laughs> I will speak through you. You will see. I will see through you. You, I will heal through you. Ah, what an honor. What an honor. Now watch this, God. Now watch this. So the call to preach the gospel is the highest call than any other call. Now watch this. That's why Paul would say, I press towards the mark. I press. I press towards the mark of the high calling. Why is there a pressing? Because there are many excuses. I am not ready. I'm waiting for this to happen so that I can start doing ministry. I'm waiting for this so that I can start doing this. Oh, I'm just waiting for God to do this for me. And then I start ministry. Those are the excuses. That's why Paul said, I press towards the mark of the high calling. I press towards the mark of the high calling. Why? Because they are excuses. Look at Acts chapter 26. <clears throat> Acts 26. Acts 26, verse 19. Acts 26 and 19. The Bible says, Therefore, O King Agrippa, I will not be disobedient. Pay attention. Therefore, King Agrippa, I will not, I will not be, I will not, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Meaning, I was not disobedient to the heavenly call. I did not disobey. Now watch this. What I'm about to say is deep. So sit down. Fascinate your seat belt. Because what I'm about to say now, you will never hear this from anyone else. Hmm. He said, O oh, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the high calling, to the heavenly vision, meaning to your call. So that means, <clears throat> now watch this. Oh, what I'm about to say, please, please, I don't want you to miss this now. If you miss this, there was no point. O oh, oh, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, meaning to the high calling, meaning to the ministry, meaning to my call. He said, I was not disobedient. Now, watch this. To refuse ministry is disobedience. To refuse to do ministry is you being disobedient. Let me explain how that comes about that you are being disobedient. Now watch this. You were a sinner. You were a sinner that was left for hell. Jesus took your place and he died your death. He paid the price without hope of you accepting life, accepting him. But he did that. His body was torn. Blood was gushing out. 
On his way to Golgotha, he carried his cross. They nailed him on the cross. And that was meant to be you. But he did that for you, which was substitutionary. Where you were meant to be crucified, he took your place. Oh, God help me. When, they, when he asked for water, they refused. They gave him vinegar. Mm, 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 mm. Blood gushing out. Whether his intestines were hanging. But he did all that thinking of you, Kathy. And somebody preached that same message to you. And you received life. And you were saved and were born again. Translated from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. Then Jesus comes to you. And says, Rose. I cannot do this. Myself. For I am a spirit. For God is a spirit. I cannot do this myself. But Rose, I want to use your body. I want to use your mind. I want to use your heart. That I may reach out to many that they may be saved. For the will of the Father is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. And God is saying, Kathy, can I use your body so that I can spread the gospel that saves the message of his death his burial and his resurrection can i use your body and you are there and you said you are rejecting said no i don't want being disobedient to the call you are not on this earth just being here that you buy houses buy cars buy this be known be this that is not the point purpose of you being here there is a call of ministry over your life god has called you and he has requested to use your body that he may preach this gospel the same message that you received that brought life to you he's saying i want to do the same thing i i need you I need you. Jesus needs a man to do that, to do ministry. There are people right now that are in bondage. There are people right now that are on the verge of giving up. There are people right now that are on in, I, I, in, uh, in depression. There, there is somebody that is watching that is on the verge of maybe committing suicide. Because it seems like everything is pressing against him. His back is against the wall. But then God says, Rose, where are you? Can I use your body to reach out to my sons and daughters that are on the verge of giving up? And then you say no to the calling. You said, no, I'm not doing that. You cannot use my body. That is disobedience. You, when you refuse ministry, this is what you are refusing. You are refusing for God to use you as a vessel to reach out to many. Yet somebody reached out to you. Somebody right now is on the verge of giving up. But God is saying, can I use you, Kalavati? Can I use you? And reach out to those people that are in bondage. That I may bring them from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. I cannot do it by myself. But you have to preach the gospel to them. The gospel that saves. There is a call of God over your life. It is the highest honor to save God. Jesus needs you. That he may fulfill his assignment. He needs you. That his death, his burial and his resurrection will not be in vain. He needs your body. He needs your voice. He needs your heart. 
to help him take this gospel which he died for and rose on the third day so that you can reach out to many. He needs you. He said, work with me. Work with me. He did not say work for me. Work with me because I will be in you. I will accompany your words with signs and wonders. I will heal through you. I will prophesy through you. I will bring redemption through you. Salvation through you. Acceptance through you. I will translate them from the kingdom of darkness into the marvelous light through you. And you say no. And you say no. May, be this, may this be a day that you repent from saying no to the call of God. I know your question is, but where do I start from, Pastor? You start from where you are. Start from where you are. Start from where you are. Answering the call of ministry is part of thanksgiving. You are saying, Lord, I thank you. You answering the call is you are saying, thank you, Lord. For your death, your burial, and your resurrection. Thank you that I have life. Thank you that I have been accepted. The world had rejected me, but you have accepted me. For they that look unto him are radiant. Their faces will never be covered with shame. The cross was a place of shame, but Jesus took the shame that I may not face shame. Father, I thank you. So accepting the call is thanksgiving. It's thanksgiving. Every time you preach the gospel, you are being thankful. Oh God, where would I be? Lara Ziza. Where would I be, oh God? If not for you, where will I be? The moment you preach the gospel, you have been thankful to the Father for salvation. Say, Lord, where would I be? If it was not for you, but Lord, I want others to to be saved. So the message that saves you or the message that saved you becomes your mission in life. I pray that you are hearing me. You have no excuse of doing ministry. You have no excuse because the message that saved you becomes your mission in life so when you were born again the immediate thing that will be is growth to do ministry that's why upon his ascension he gave some apostles some prophets pastors evangelists why for the equipping of the saints to do what to do the work of ministry To do the work of ministry. So a sign that you are growing. For those that think we want to know whether you are growing or not growing. A sign that you are growing is that you have this appetite to want to teach others to preach the gospel. That's a sign that you are growing. An appetite for evangelism. An appetite for discipleship. An appetite that I will not sleep until someone else receives life. That is a sign that you are growing. You speaking in tongues is not a sign that you are growing. But the appetite, like I'm seeing Rosemary say, this is the biggest desire, soul winning. That appetite is a sign that you are growing. So you cannot be learning what I'm teaching you and not, not, not utilizing the message. Look at Philippians chapter 1. <clears throat> um, I think I'm going to close in a few minutes because I have to carry on. I have to continue with this next week. Otherwise, we'll be here for, for hours. But if it's okay with you. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 18. Praise God. 
Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 18. The Bible says, Having the eyes of your eyes, your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. So Paul is praying that your eyes of understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of which he has called you. Meaning there is already a calling in your life. So the prayer is for you to know, not to be called. You missed that. I know that. Paul's prayer is that your eyes of understanding being enlightened, that you may know. So it is in you knowing your call, not you praying to be called. You are not praying to be called. Oh God, I want you to call me. Uh -uh. You are praying that you may know the call that he, he has called you for. So that's the prayer of Paul. The eyes of your hearts being enlightened. That you may know what is, what is the hope of his calling. Not that you, it's not a prayer for you to be called. It's a prayer for you to know your calling. <sighs> Ephesians. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4. I'm about to close. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 1. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 1. Therefore, a prisoner, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of your calling to which you have been called. That means there's a calling. But now he's saying, I want you to walk worthy. So how do you walk worthy? When you answer the call, that is walking worthy. So you, you, so you call, you're called to, to you, you're called to do ministry, which is the gift you have in Christ Jesus. Your call to do ministry is the gift which you have in Christ Jesus. First Peter. Look at First Peter. <clears throat> Praise God. First Peter. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. Pradia Zujalamande. But but you. I don't know who is now listening to this. Maybe it's Daisy. Maybe it's uh, Calavati. Maybe it's Florence. Maybe it's Mary. Maybe it's Boitumelo. Maybe it's Hope. He says, but you, 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 that is under the sound. Maybe, uh, maybe it's for Kana. He said, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who did what who called you you're called who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so the call of salvation carries with it because there he's talking about you've been called from from the light from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light that is salvation. So the call of salvation carries with it the mandate of ministry. The call of salvation carries with it the mandate of ministry. Now pay attention. Exodus right. Are you ready? I want to punish the devil. Now I want to punish the devil. The devil is about to be punished now. Because the devil was thinking there's no punishment coming. Uh, punishment is coming. <laughs> Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19 verse number 4. Watch this. You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians. And how I before you on eagles wings. And brought you to myself. Now therefore if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my command. You shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. For all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. He said, you did not come to me. I brought you out by my hand. You did not come to me. I chose you. I brought you out. Meaning salvation is the work of Christ 100%. Verse number five is key. 
It says what? Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests. So from Exodus, the plan of God for your life was for you to be kings and priests unto God. The will of God is for all of you to be a kingdom of priests. Now watch this. I want to punish the devil. But now watch this. Yet the children of Israel denied the offer. God summoned them and said, Moses, you go and bring the children of Israel up here. I want to speak to them. I want to talk to them. I want them to hear my voice. I want them to hear me when I speak. They declined. They refused. Said, no, we will not go there. You, Moses, you go there and you speak to God. And whatever God says, you come back and you tell us. That is where the problem began. And we have seen that problem still in the body of Christ. This is why you get to a point whereby you call another man your Moses. That um, the man of God has to hear from God for me. Oh, I cannot marry. I'm waiting for the man of God to tell me who should I marry or who should marry me. That is where the problem began. Yet the plan of God was for all men to be priests unto God. A kingdom of priests. But they denied. So because they denied, God said, Hey Moses, these guys have not denied you. They have denied me. So not a problem. I am giving you charge over them. So Moses became in charge of the children of Israel. Hence, Moses then said, Ah, okay. So you guys don't want to be priests. And to God, you, you are refusing to be priests. Not a problem. He chose his priests and he says, these are the priests now. He chose the Levites. He said, these are the priests. And you now, you start paying tithes there. Pay tithes. And he gave the law. Yeah, you gave the law. If you break one, you break all. Moses now was in charge. Yet that was not the plan of God. The will of God was for us to be a kingdom of priests. But they declined. They refused. They wanted a man. They rejected God. Like many of you, you are rejecting God. You are holding on to a man. Rejecting God. Holding on to oils. Rejecting God. Holding on to nonsense. It started in Exodus. When God summoned the children of Israel said, Come here. I want to speak to you. I want you to hear my voice. That's the same thing. You, you, you have to get to a point whereby... You get to a point whereby somebody comes to you and says, Maro sataya bandraba. Woo! That says the spirit of the Lord unto you. And then you turn around and say, Reketere bosha. That same God, I hear his voice. You are lying. You missed it. You will get it next month. Don't worry. So that was the intention that God wanted us to be a kingdom of priests. But we rejected. We rejected said no <laughs> i want my moses i want my moses moses you go speak to god and whatever god says and then you come down and you tell us what god is saying that's why many of you are deceived manipulated the man of god said oh god is saying ah you too can you hear the prophetic mandate was taken away from the prophets. Joel prophesied it. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all Kathys, upon all daisies, upon all rosemaries, upon all flesh. They, my sons, they shall prophesy. Me, you too, you can prophesy. The prophetic was taken away. The prophetic mandate was taken away. It is no longer exclusive. The prophetic is no longer exclusive. It has been given to all of us. Hebrews chapter 1 verse number 1. The Bible says what? In sundry times God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by his son. Was it not on, my, on, 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 on the day of transfiguration when the Bible says Elijah was there. Uh, Elijah appeared. Uh, Moses appeared. Jesus was there. And what is Peter said? No, let us build three tabernacles. Before they were about to bring the, build three tabernacles. Elijah was like, hey, 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 ask the prophets our voice. Hey, 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 hey. Forget me. I'm, I'm not staying here. Boom. He left. And then Moses was like, oh, 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 oh. You want to build what? Three what? For me. Ah, I was the law. This guy came. He rectified the law. He nailed the law. 
No. Then a voice came from heaven and said, This is my beloved son, Larazija Gunamandarabasa, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Meaning what? Forget Moses. Forget the prophets. The mandate of the prophets. The prophetic is no longer exclusive. It has been given to everybody. Joel prophesied it. In the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall do what? Shall prophesy. So if a prophet comes and says, God is saying, sow a seed of 2,000. You turn around and say, the same God that you, you, you claim you have had, me too. You turn around and say, Yes, God is saying, you are lying, sir. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. You too can prophesy. It is no longer exclusive. Now watch this. The children of Israel declined, but the what God had planned for them was for them to be a, a, a kingdom of priests. But now listen to this. When Jesus came, he came to restore that. How do I know that? Revelation chapter 1 verse number 5. God punished the devil. God Punish the devil. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 5 to 6. Jesus came to restore what was messed up in Exodus. Exodus, they rejected to hear from God for themselves. They said, we want a Moses. But when Jesus came, because this was the plan of God from beginning, that he wants a kingdom of priests. Jesus, when he came, he came to restore that. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 5. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings on earth, to whom who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. He has made us, we have been made a kingdom of priests unto his Father. Our God. That was restored. What Exodus, what the children of Israel rejected. Jesus, when he came, he restored that. Mazon Talabadia. That means Exodus chapter 19 has been fulfilled. And I declare over you right now, anybody, everybody under the sound of my voice, I declare upon you that you will preach this gospel with power. You will cast out demons. You will heal the sick. And I declare and I decree over you, you will preach this gospel with boldness, with the Lord working with you. With the Lord walking with you, confirming his words with signs and wonders. I declare this over you in the name of Jesus. I declare that you are a commander. You are a commander of signs and wonders. These are your tools for ministry. These are your tools for ministry. Signs and wonders are your tools for ministry. Wherever you shall preach the gospel, signs and wonders shall follow. The Bible declares, it says, these signs shall follow them that believe. We don't chase for signs, but signs they follow us because they are a tool for us to do ministry. Everything that you need for ministry has already been given unto you. Freely, it has been given unto you. All power that has been given has been given unto you. My goodness, everything that you need for ministry has already been given unto you. It's been given unto you. Now watch this. Now watch this. Ah, zibrato jaliga barahadia. Let's go back to Exodus. Oh God, I really want to finish, but um. I really want to finish, but let me go to, let me take you to Exodus chapter 4, verse number 22. Exodus chapter 4, verse number 22. I really want to finish. Please allow me to push this thing a little bit. Let me push this. Let me push this. Allow me to push this. Now watch this. Exodus chapter 4 verse number 22 the Bible says then you shall say to Pharaoh then you shall say to Pharaoh thus says the Lord Israel is my firstborn son 
I say to you, let my son go that he may save me. If you refuse to let him go, behold, I will kill your firstborn son. Now pay attention. What I'm about to say, what I'm about to say is going to blow your mind. Exodus chapter 20, Exodus 4, verse 22 to 23. Now watch this. Yataya baradia. This is the Lord speaking. He says what? Oh, I, Rosemary just caught it. Prophetess Rosemary just caught it. Oh God. He says, then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel, oh sorry. Rosemary is my firstborn son, my firstborn daughter. And I say to you, let my son go that he may save me. So you have been, you have been released from every pharaoh to do what? To do ministry. Now, pay attention. There is something that happened there in Exodus 4, 4 22 to 23. There is something that happened there. Now, watch this. The key word there is, he said, let my son, let my daughter, ah, God help me to help your people. Let my daughter go. The first thing that God did was he put a claim that Rosemary, my daughter, Florence, my daughter, Daisy, my daughter, Mary, my son, Kathy, my daughter, Kana, my daughter. Even if I miss your name, just put your name there. Because it's the names that I'm seeing, the people that are here. Even those that are watching that we can't see that you're watching. Put your name. The first claim was, my, this is my son, Israel. And guess what then happens after that? He said, tell this Pharaoh to let my firstborn son go. I want my son to come and serve me, meaning ministry. But if you don't allow my son to go, I'm telling you, I will kill your firstborn son. Ah, Pharaoh, when he heard that, he said, yes. Yeah. In my Nigerian native language, Pharaoh, when he heard that, he said, he held his head right like this, and he said, Chineke. <laughs> Pharaoh turned around and said, Chineke. Let me let Kalavati go. Because eh, they want to kill my son. Yeah, you see how special you are before God. No, wait, wait for it. Oh God, wait for it. You are my, you are born again to serve. You are born again for ministry. Once you accept the call of God, once you accept the call of God, God will go all the way out to make sure that you need all that you need for ministry is supplied. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. So if God would put a claim on you that Pharaoh, oh, Pharaoh, let my, let my daughter go. Let gay flow go. Let gay flow go. That she may save me. But if you don't let her go, I'm telling you this, I will kill your firstborn. Watch this. God is the caller and the doer. What you need to do is to just cooperate. So when that happened, when Pharaoh was told that if you don't let my son, my daughter, go. If you don't let them go, I'll kill your son. Then Pharaoh started negotiating. But before we get to the negotiations, I declare and I decree over you. Every Pharaoh that has been holding you from doing ministry, whatever it is that has been holding you back from doing ministry, they, it will let you go today in the name of Jesus. I declare it lets you go that you may save God. And God will go all out to make sure that you are set free from every pharaoh that is holding you back from doing ministry. Now look at this. 
Faro began to negotiate Lara Zibarada and Telebosha. Okay, let, let me push this so that I can finish in the next 15 minutes. Let me push this. Let me push this. Let me push this. God is the, is the caller and the doer. All you need to do is to cooperate. Ah, Rosemary caught it. Rosemary just caught it. Prophetess Rosemary just caught it. She just said, beware of those who hinder the cold of God. You just caught it, my dear, because that is the next statement I was about to say. Your eyes of understanding have been enlightened. The prophetic is becoming sharper. So what is happening right now while we, were, while we are having this broadcast? Let me let you know this. Impartation is taking place through the word, not me. It's the word. Impartation. What is, what is impartation? When the spirit of Gribadosha takes from your spirit and ex, ex, makes it manifest. So it is happening. She just mentioned the next thing I was about to say. It is happening. This is what we call impartation of the word. Of the word. So, Pharaoh began to negotiate. Yvonne, it is good to see you. It is good to see you. Now, Pharaoh began to negotiate. He said, okay, 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 okay. I will let you go. But you don't go far. Rosemary, you just blessed my heart. Hmm. Impartation is taking place through the word. It's through the word. It's through the word. She's now saying the things that I'm about to say next. Exactly how I was going to say it. Not that she said it because it sounded. No, exactly the same words I was about to say. She just said it. Now watch this. Pharaoh began to negotiate. And he said what? What did Pharaoh say? Pharaoh said, I will let you go. But do not go far. There are people that will come to you. Oh, God help me. There are people that will come to you and say, Ah, this ministry that you want to do, you, you, just, you, you need to take your time, relax, you, don't, don't, don't push so much. Don't go so far. Don't go in too deep of ministry. Just, you know, stay in the shallow end. This is Pharaoh. He's saying, I will let you go, but don't go far. So be very careful of those that will that are called fire extinguishers that will extinguish your call. The ones that will distract the ones that are called to do work of ministry. Say, ah, no, no, we they will come and say, we've been doing this ministry for long. Ah, relax. Just don't 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 go in too deep. Just just relax. Just relax. These are fire extinguishers. He said, you can go, but you will not go far. Moses said, uh, is that what you're saying? And Moses released plagues. Moses released plagues. Pharaoh said, oh, okay, 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 okay. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. But your wives and children have to stay behind. Your wives and children have to stay behind. Pharaoh knows that if the wives and the children stay behind, when the men go, they will not go far because they have to come back for their families. Yet the Bible says, as for me and my household, we shall save the Lord. Moses said, Pharaoh, this negotiation is not working. And then he released plagues because Pharaoh would not let the people of God go. Pharaoh said, okay, 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 wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, okay. You can go far. You can go with your wives. You can go with your children. But you will leave your wealth behind. Ah, Moses said, we are not leaving my wealth behind. So there are times whereby the, the, the enemy will allow you to go into ministry. But he will tie your finances. But I'm here to announce the negotiations are over. We are not negotiating with any pharaoh. Anything that has been holding you back, anything that has been stopping you from ministry will not stop you any longer. For God has put a claim over your name and said, this is my son, Emmanuel. Let him go that he may save me. Whatever that has been tying you, whatever that has been pulling you back from doing ministry, today you are released in the name of Jesus. 
Moses said, we cannot leave our world behind because we don't know what God will ask of us where we are going. He said, you can go with your wives. You can go with everything, but leave your wealth. Ah, Moses said, we are not leaving any wealth behind. We are going with our wives. We are going with our families. Because as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I am going even with my finances. We are going with our wealth, with our kettles, with our sheep. We are going with everything because we don't know what God is going to ask us ahead of us. So the devil will use that. He will use your wife. He might use your wife. To quench your fire or you might use your husband vice versa but joshua 24 ratane monde bosa joshua 24 verse number 15 boy i love jesus joshua 24 verse number 15 what does the bible say joshua 24 15 and the bible says and if it is the evil in your eyes to serve the Lord. Choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your father saved in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in those land you dwell. But as for me, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So God is releasing every Pharaoh that you may serve him. So you have been released from ministry because the call of God is upon your life. The call of God is upon you. No more negotiations. No more neg negotiations with any form of Pharaoh. Any form of Pharaoh will let you go this day. Every Pharaoh, I declare, whether it is sickness, sickness can be a Pharaoh to you. I declare and I decree. By reason of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, every form of sickness, every form of affliction will let you go that you may serve God. No sickness will stop you. If death could not hold him down, sickness cannot hold you down. Death cannot hold you down. By the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, resides in your inside. It shall vitalize your mortal body. I command your bodies to be vitalized. Every pharaoh of sickness, I command you to let you go. That you may save God. That you may save God. And I declare that everything that you need to serve God is being released right now in the name of Jesus. Everything that you need to serve God with is being released right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, mandebo shatayaba. Radesko jaliga barahadia. There is a pharaoh of sickness. Oh, God help me. Mm, mm, mm. There is a pharaoh of sickness. I feel that Pharaoh holding someone so strong. I command you, you Pharaoh of sickness, you form of sickness, you affliction. I declare and I decree by the authority of our soon coming king, by the powers that have been invested in me. For the Bible declares us, we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Even if I'm not there. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I speak life in your body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I command every sickness, every pharaoh, I command it to let you go. In the name of Jesus. Every pain in your body, I command it out in the name of Jesus. Everything that our heavenly father did not plant, let it be flushed out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare your body be made whole. I declare your body be made whole. I declare your body be made whole in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that everything that you need to save God is being released right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't care how long that Pharaoh has been holding you. I don't care how long that Pharaoh has been in your life. I don't care how long that Pharaoh has been tormenting your life. But I'm here to declare and to decree. According to the words. The Bible declares after you have suffered a little while. I, the God of all grace. I will establish you. I will restore you. I will confirm you. For many are the afflictions of the righteous. 
but the Lord delivers them all. And I declare your day of being delivered from every form of affliction is now. Every Pharaoh lets you go in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Za le resodija katabra don telegisha. My goodness. The day that you choose, watch this. The day, the day, the day that you choose to save God. The day. Many things that you have been looking for. Many things that you have been looking for before you save God won't happen. But when you start saving God without them, they will fall in place. There are things that you said, God, if I have this first, then I'll save you. Those things will not happen. But when you start serving God, even without them, while you are serving God, those things will begin to fall into place. Any excuse of not doing ministry. By reason of today, your mind has been renewed. Many of you have many excuses. Just start where you are. Ye that is faithful in little will have power over many. If you wait, you will waste. Take a step and start. From where you are, take a step and start. Now watch this. I want to show you something in Luke and then we pray and close. <clears throat> See this in Luke, Luke 22. I want to show you something in Luke 22. This will bless your heart. Luke 22. When I'm telling you that some of these things, don't wait for the things there. Just start. These things will fall in place. Just start where you are. Luke 22, verse 35. Watch this. Watch this. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. Now watch this. He says, and he said to them, when I sent you out with no money bag or uh, snap sacks or sandals, did you lack anything? Did you lack anything? They said nothing. He said to them, but now let the one who has the money bag take it and likewise and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. Jesus is saying, when I sent you to preach the gospel, did you go with money? They said, no, we didn't. Did you go with lunch tins and lunch boxes, snap packs and snap bags and all that? They said, no, we didn't. Said, but did you lack anything? Said, no, we did not lack. The day that you begin to serve God, Everything that you need for ministry, he will supply. He will cause men to give into your bosom. He will cause men to come to your aid. I remember I was sharing this with, um, with some of the pastors from Liverpool. That um, we have a foundation, Reach Out Foundation, um, that um, we've good families that we take care of and you know widows and orphans but there was never a day we came on a live broadcast and uh, we were solicitating for money said please we need money we need you to help us no there was never a day and you never catch us doing that are we saying it's bad no we're not saying it's bad but it's just not us so while we were doing that when the Lord said, when, when I sent you out, did you lack anything? It begins to make sense to me now. A friend of mine was watching my broadcast. He said, yeah, man, dude, man, I, I saw, I came through your Facebook. We grew up together. He said, I came through your Facebook and I'm saying, wow, man, 
I'm so proud of who you've become because of us back in the days he knew me and I was just, uh, remember when God calls, he calls the unqualified and because Jesus is our qualification. I was one of those that did not look like a pastor. I had dreadlocks, everything, nine yards, smoking, drinking, everything. I did not look like one. But still God chose me. The same way that God chose you. So this guy, we grew up together. And then he turns around and said, you know what? I'm, I'm happy of what you're doing. Listen, I'm flying back home. So what I want to do is I want to go and sponsor you the foundation from nowhere. And then somebody, I was on the call again, said, listen, I, I'm impressed with what you're doing. Listen, I want to bring you into a business that will even help you more to sponsor these children, these orphans, the widows and everything and all that. And then I remembered Luke 24. He said, when the Lord said, when I sent you, did you go with any money? Did you go with this? But did you lack anything? No. As much as ministry and gospel is free, the means of it is not free. But our trust is in the Lord. If, if, if anything is to work or change or a building or this or that, God is the one that will provide. Where there is a vision, there is provision. And I declare, may your doors be opened. As you do ministry, start from where you are. Just start from there. Start from there. God is the caller and the doer. All you need to do is cooperate. It was in the book of what? In the book of Acts chapter 1 verse number 4. I'm closing now. So I'm just giving you scriptures. Go through them. In Acts 18 verse 1 to 4. Where there were a group of people. That there were members. The members were even prophets. That means you, you can have a, mem a group of members with prophets, pastors and apostles in one church. Why? Because the gifts of the spirit are in them so it is the manifestation that differs you can have a church and the members are prophets the members are teachers the members are apostles because all the gifts they're in their inside then the need when the need arises for the prophetic the manifestation of the prophetic does manifest so he said the holy ghost has sent them so I'm here to declare and to decree over you. In this season, like I said, I want to close. I'm closing now because I've taken much of your time. God loves you. God has called you. There's a call of God over your life. There's a calling of God upon your life. And I declare and I decree that your prayer life will change from today. Because through this teaching, there was impartation that took place. Your prayer life changes from today. I declare boldness has come upon you in the name of Jesus. You will preach the gospel with boldness from a place of knowledge. You will preach this gospel with boldness from a place of knowledge. And I declare and I decree that the supernatural will find expression through you in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that has been holding you back from doing ministry from this day forth, I declare and I decree it being cancelled in the mighty name of Jesus. You are blessed of God. You are called of God. You are royalty. You are chosen by God. It doesn't matter that you don't look like it. It doesn't change. Remember, David did not look like a king, but he was called a king. But he did not look like one because he spent his time in the fields tending the sheep. It doesn't matter the circumstance that you might be facing right now, but the call of God is upon your life. And the kingship is in you. The priesthood is is in you regardless of what you look like regardless of your experiences and i declare and i decree that the kingship and the priesthood that is in you in these coming weeks let there be a manifestation in the mighty name of jesus my beloved i would love to stay for long but i just want you to know that i love you so dearly and i want you to have a blessed week knowing fully that there is a call from God that is upon your life. You are called by God.
Your call does not need a mountain experience. Your call is by reason of salvation. There's no need for mountaintop experience. That, are you called? Did you hear God? Did God speak to you? Did you? Some of you are not called. Some of you, are, because people use that scripture, for many are called, but a few are chosen. People don't understand that scripture. They don't understand. When he's talking about for many are called, that means there are many that have been called, but they have not accepted the call. That's, his, that's what he's saying. For many are called, but a few are chosen. The chosen, those are the ones that accepted the call. So the call of God is upon your life, regardless of how you look like. You might not look the part. You might not look like a pastor, but the call of God is upon your life. Chloe, it is good to see you, my beloved. The call of God is upon your life. David did not look like a king, but the call of God was in him. Even, if he, even though he spent time in the fields tending the ship, when the prophet came wanting to anoint a king, they started looking at those that looked the part, the ones that looked like kings. But God did not choose the wise. He chose the foolish things of the world to confirm. David did not look like a king. The ones that looked like kings, God did not select them. The people that God used from Genesis to Revelation, they were people that were not perfect. The call of God is upon your life. Irregardless that you don't look like it, but you are called by God. And I declare and I decree that in this season, may you accept the call of God. Maybe before I go, maybe somebody's watching, somebody's watching um, for the first time. You're watching for the first time and you're saying, you know what? I've heard the message because my assignment, remember, is to preach this gospel that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Maybe you're here or maybe you're watching from YouTube and you're saying, you know what? I came across this message, but I want to receive this word in my life. I want to receive life. I just want you to pray this simple prayer with me. If you're saying, I'm ready, I'm ready. I want God to use me. I want God to work through me. Because remember, all he wants is for your availability. I just want you to pray with me and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I open up my life for you to work through me. I accept my calling. I acknowledge the call that is you have bestowed upon my life. On this day forth, Lord, I take upon this assignment to spread this gospel to all ends of the earth. Father, I thank you because you will be walking with me, confirming your word with signs and wonders. Everything that wants to stop me, every pharaoh that wants to stop me from fulfilling my assignment, it has been destroyed today. Father, I press forwards, I press towards the mark of the high calling, the calling, of my heavenly calling. Today, I accept to do the work of ministry. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, for this word and I acknowledge that the call of God is upon my life. And everything that I desire to do, the work of ministry, has been granted unto me. Thank you, Lord, for this day. I will do the work of ministry. I will serve you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. I will not manipulate your people. I will preach the undiluted message of Christ in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. And if you have just made that prayer, listen, welcome to the vine, to the, the harvest is plenty. Welcome to the fields for the harvest is plenty. 
but the laborers are few. And I thank God that you are among the laborers that will go ye therefore and preach this gospel. My beloved, have a glorious week that is filled with the manifestations of the goodness and the grace of God, of what God has already done for us through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. What Christ has achieved for us. The finished work, may there be a manifestation. And I declare that from this day forth, you are a laborer in the hands of God. And you shall never lack. The disciples never lacked. You shall never lack. Why? Because my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. You are in Christ Jesus where everything has been already fulfilled. Your life is hid in Christ. You are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. For what? For good works. And I declare you shall do good works. In Jesus mighty name. From me, my beloved, it is Shalom. I love you so dearly. I can't wait to see you next Sunday. God bless you.